This is Leonard Nimoy. There was a timelessness to the country. The rolling green land and the towering trees were without age. It seemed that they had been forever and would be forever. This was a place ruled by seasons, not calendars or clocks. And the seasons were eternal. The boy was carefully keeping to the back roads and away from the more heavily traveled highways. He wore pants tucked into boots and a white cotton shirt. He had a knapsack strapped to his back and a cap pulled low on his forehead. His long, dark blonde hair reached his shoulders. His name was Davy Skinner. As he cautiously crossed the countryside, he often glanced behind him as if he knew that he was being followed. To the pastoral serenity, his lone and weary figure brought a sense of apprehension, of escape and pursuit. Davy Skinner was escaping, bound for a strange and foreign place. But before he arrived there, he would have to travel the landscape of his soul. If he felt he was being pursued, the truth was that he was only chasing after himself. He stopped for a moment and leaned against the split rail fence. He was tired, bone weary. He'd been on the road since early morning, and by the lengthening shadows and the lowering sun, Davy knew the day to be nearly done. He was wondering where he could sleep tonight, feeling that he could easily lie down on this very spot when the sound of approaching footsteps jolted him. With his heart pounding, Davy watched the man come toward him. And as he neared, Davy could begin to make out his face, a hard and weathered face. His huge hands hung gnarled from the sleeves of his red flannel shirt. Clearly, the man had spent all his days in the wind and the sun, laboring in the fields. Davy recognized him as a farmer and a stranger. His heartbeat began to return to normal. Hello there. Evening. At that fork in the road just ahead, I turn left to go north, don't I? North, you say? Yes, sir, north. Left. Yeah, thank you, sir. And a good evening to you. The farmer passed on without another word. He hadn't even slowed his steps. He had barely looked at Davy. The man's lack of friendly interest or curiosity was strangely soothing to the boy. He leaned back in relief against the fence and watched him move down the shadow-patched road. He was thinking that this was the usual roadside encounter and that he would never see the grim-faced farmer again. But Davy Skinner was wrong. Their paths were destined to cross once more. And that's only the beginning of our story. Mutual Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis's production of the Mutual Radio Theater. Our story, Davy Skinner's War by Pamela Russell. Our stars, Tommy Cook and Joan McCall. It was dusk. And the night was coming on fast when Davy Skinner sneaked into the large red barn. He looked around the dark interior, making sure it was deserted. And then, he quickly climbed up into the loft and collapsed in the hay. He was tired and hungry. His stomach rumbled, but his eyes were heavy and closing. Fatigue won out over hunger. He dropped off to sleep but was awakened after only a few minutes by shouts and running footsteps. A man and a girl had entered the barn. Davy couldn't see the man's face, but he knew the voice. It was the farmer he had met on the road. Davy had unknowingly found his way to his farm. He listened to the angry exchange going on below it. Don't you never try to run from me, Faith Hobart. You're a worthless, lazy girl. Pa, I'm sorry about supper. Clara was burning on the stove. You with your face stuck in a book. Well, I guess I just forgot the time. I'm sorry. I had a whale of blazes out of you. But that just don't do no good with you. Nothing does. 
Just a lazy, worthless girl. That's all you are. Well, you see this here book of yours? I'm going to burn it. Just like you burned my supper. Please, Pa, please don't. Burn it, I will. And every other book in the house except the Bible. The holy book's the only one there need be in a God-fearing house. I promise, Pa, I'll never burn supper again. Only please, please, let me have my book back. No. No more books for you. They put wrong ideas in your head. I'm going to burn them all. You hear me? No. Don't you ever do that again, girl. I say what's what around here. You do what I say or you'll be mighty sorry. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you? Yes, Pa. Tomorrow, girl, you better do right. You have the cows milked, the eggs gathered, the chickens fed, my breakfast fixed by Sonnet. And if you're lolling around past dawn, you'll regret it. Do you hear me? Yes, Pa. Don't cry. Who's that up there? Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. My name's Davy Skinner. Oh, don't don't be scared. I mean you no harm. I had no place to go. I was going to sleep in your barn tonight. Is that all right, Faith? Well, Faith is your name, isn't it? Yes, that's my name. Paul wouldn't like you staying here. Are you going to tell him about me? No, I guess not. How is it you have no place to go? Well, just don't, that's all. What are you running from? Oh, nothing. Looks to me like you're running. No, oh, I'm not. Uh, I'm standing still right here in front of you, Faith. <laughs> I guess you are at that. Right now you are. Is your father always that way to you? What way? So mean. Yes, he's a mean man. But he's my pa. What can I do? I don't know. Run off like you, maybe? I, I told you, I, I'm not running. And I say you are. How many days have you been on the run, Davy? Or is it weeks? You're not talking. Are you hungry? No. Well, your stomach's talking, even if you're not. It says you're hungry. All right. I haven't eaten since yesterday morning. What if I brought you something? Aren't you afraid your father might see you doing it? No. The sun's gone down. That means it's time to go to sleep. I don't believe Pa's ever seen the stars in the sky. I'll bet that man doesn't even know what the moon is. Will he really burn your books? Probably already has, the ones he could find. I hide them. He'll never find all of them. You love books, don't you? I do. They're my way of running off. I know I'm not really going anywhere, but for a little while I can feel like I'm gone. Gone to all kinds of wonderful faraway places. Maybe someday I really will run, like you are. I told you, I, I'm I not... No, you're not running. You sure won't be if you don't get something to eat soon. I'll see what I can find in the kitchen. There's not much. I guess you might have heard I burned supper. Faith. Yes? I don't know how anybody could be mean to you. Well, Paul finds it very easy. Of course, he likes to drown kittens and shoot deer. The more helpless the creature, the better he likes it. I'll be right back, Davy. Be careful, Faith. Don't wake him. I wander in the night all the time. I don't have to be careful not to wake him. What I have to be careful of is not becoming like him and then killing him in his sleep. I'll be back. The sky was barely blue. To the east, there was a rosy glow that hindered at sunrise. But Davy Skinner looked from the high barn window to the north. North was his destination. There was his refuge. He hurriedly strapped on his knapsack and came stealthily down from the loft. He was almost out the door when he heard her speak. You weren't even going to say goodbye? Faith? Over here, by the stalls. Oh, I wanted to say goodbye and to thank you for the food, too, but I, I didn't know where to find you. Well, here I am. Oh, thank you, Faith. And goodbye. 
That rooster runs fast, you know. It's not as late as he says. It's late enough. I should have been gone by now. Don't go just yet. Stay a few minutes longer. Have you ever seen a girl milk a cow? I've never seen anyone milk a cow. I'm a city boy. What city? May I ask you that? New York. You live in New York? I did. I've been there only once. Awfully fast and furious, but I liked it. So did I. Then why did you leave? I... had to. You shouldn't be afraid to talk to me. You can tell me anything, Davy. I won't repeat it. I have no one to talk to. No one at all? No. Where's your mother? She died when I was a little girl. Oh, sorry. I don't remember her. I wish I did. Andrew remembers her. He used to tell me wonderful stories about her. I think he made them up sometimes, just so I'd have a mother. Something of a mother, anyway. But who, who's Andrew? <laughs> I forget that we're strangers, Davy. You don't seem a stranger to me. Andrew is my big brother. Big? Oh, he's a beanpole, tall and skinny. He's just skin and bones, that boy. Six feet two and 140 pounds. But maybe he's put on weight in the army. I don't know. It seems like I never hear from him. A letter once in a while. Not enough. You miss him. So much. He's the only reason I stay here. I'm just waiting for him to come home. Then we can leave together. Oh, Faith, I have to go. I know you do. This is going to sound kind of crazy. I don't even really know you. Yes, you do, Davy. I hate to leave you here. I'll be all right. I'll manage until Andrew comes. I hope he comes soon. So do I. But you never know about wars, how long they'll go on. And why they begin in the first place. I guess people just can't get along with one another. So they blow each other to bits. Davy, I have to go. Tell me at least which way you're headed. At least tell me that, if nothing else. I'd like to be able to tell you everything, but I can't. All right, but which way are you going? North. The old mill road would be best. It's not used much anymore, and you don't want to be seen, do you? You know I don't. Cut across the pasture. You'll come right to it. Faith, I don't know what to say. Tonight I'll wish on the North Star for you. What will you wish? That you arrive safely where you're going. That you find what you want there. Maybe someday I'll be able to come home again. If that happens, you'll be the first one that I... Where are you, girl? Faith! You better answer me! Faith! Go, Davy, quickly, through the window. Remember, across the pasture to the mill road. Goodbye, Faith. Goodbye. Faith! Faith! Keep coming. Run, Davy, run! Davy was resting under a dusty leaf tree by the roadside, eating the last of the bread and jam that Faith had given him. He couldn't stop thinking of Faith, couldn't stop seeing her face as she said goodbye to him. Davy squinted and made out the figure of a man far down the road. As the man came closer, Davy saw that he wore a uniform, and closer still, that he had only one arm. When he was almost even with him, Davy spoke. Hello. Oh. Hot one today. Sure is. I have some water here if you'd like some. I would, thanks. Didn't expect to see anybody on this old road. Nobody uses it much anymore. So I was told. You're not from around these parts, are you? No, I'm not. I didn't think so. I've lived here all my life and I know most of the faces. Of course, I've been away for a while. You thinking of settling here? No. Well, you might think twice about that. This is a real pretty place. I know I'm awful glad to be home. Been home long? No, about two days now. Out getting reacquainted. Yeah, huh? you might say that. Then I get restless, too. Folks always trying to do for me, fussing around me. Not that I'm complaining, but sometimes I feel like I'm going to jump right out of my skin. It used to be all that I could think about, getting home again. But it's hard coming back. I guess it would be. You see, they're all the same. 
just the same. And I'm different now. I can't seem to light anywhere, you know. I'm always expecting to hear shelling or a gunfire start up. I can't explain it to them the way I feel. Uh, maybe I should have waited a little longer, but I, I was so anxious to get home. I came direct from the hospital. It's all right, you know. Uh, what's that? You, you were looking at my arm just now, where my arm used to be. It's all right. Don't feel bad about it. Everybody does it. It's just human nature. I guess you'd like to know how it happened. Most everybody's dying to know, but they won't ask. I can see the questions in their eyes, and they, they look away pretending like nothing's happened. But something has. I wish they'd just see me as I am and speak up. Uh, how did it happen? Well, it, it was hard fighting, close in. It was night. The sky was all black and red, lit up like hell. It was, it was fiery and smoky. All of a sudden, there was an explosion right in front of me. I saw my friend beside me fly up into the air, and I felt this awful pain in my chest and arm. But I was lucky. They got me to the hospital right away. My friend was dead. I could have died, should have died, but they saved me. That hospital, <laughs> I'll never forget it. This doctor's running around crazy like all covered in blood, putting me in mind of hog butchering on the farm. And that's where they took it from me, my arm. I had it still when I got there. I, I know that it could, I did because it, it hurt so bad. It was there in the hospital. They cut it off. But I was lucky. I guess you were. Thanks for asking. Thank you for listening. My folks, they won't ask. And even if they did, I'm not sure I could tell them. I don't know why I could tell you, except maybe because I, I know I'll never see you again. Well, I should be getting on home. Uh, are you sorry that you went to fight? No, I'm not sorry. I miss my arm something awful. I, I don't feel right anymore, kind of off balance all the time. There's so many things I can't do, little things like, like pulling on my boots and cutting up my food. I find everything takes two hands now that I only have one. But it was my duty to go. It had to be done. Nothing else to do. Would you ever tell someone else that they should go? You mean, would I tell you that you should? Yes. I don't think I could do that. It's every man's decision to make on his own. But, but, what if it's taken out of your hands, the decision made for you? What then? You've been drafted? Yes. And you don't want to go? I don't think so. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to tell you. Why don't you ask me for a couple of dollars or directions to curry, though? That'd be easy enough, but don't ask me whether you should go to war or not. I can't tell you. I went. I'm glad I went, but I'm not you. Well, thanks for the water. You're welcome. Bye now. Goodbye. Oh, and good luck to you. I'm a lucky man. I've come home again. And I may never see home again. Goodbye. Who is it? Davy. Davy, is it you? Faith, what are you doing here? I followed you. I started about three hours after you left. But, but how? I told you that I wandered in the night. I've come almost this far before. I know the land and... I prayed. Prayed that I would find you. What happened? Why have you done this? A letter came early this morning after you'd gone. A letter? Yes. Oh, from Andrew. No, about Andrew. He's dead, Davy. Andrew's dead. Oh, Faith, don't cry. Please, don't cry. I, I, I don't know what to do when you cry. <laughs> Maybe you should cry. Does it make it any better? It can sometimes. This time I don't think anything will make it better. Davy, don't you ever cry. Oh, men don't cry. Why, Davy? Why did it happen? Why did he have to die? Why, Andrew? I don't know. It's one of the rules. Rules? Men don't cry. Men go off to war, kill or be killed. 
Women wait for them to come home, and when they don't, women cry. You're thinking that I shouldn't have come after you, aren't you? You're, you're, you're not thinking too clearly right now. I know that much. Why do you say that? You're all torn up over your brother. You, you've just gone off wild. I know how it is to blindly run, run as hard as you can. But look at you. You didn't bring a thing with you. There wasn't anything from that place that I wanted to take with me. I am thinking clearly. I was right to go. I know you truly believe that, but I don't know how you can. You don't know anything about me, Faith. Where I'm going or, or why. I don't care. All I know is that there's nothing for me on that farm anymore. I had to leave. And when I thought of where I could go, the only direction that came to me was north. North to find you. Davy, tell me something. What? This morning, didn't you want to take me with you? Didn't you nearly ask me? I, I thought you wanted to. Was I wrong? No, you weren't wrong. I came so close to asking why didn't you? I had no right to ask you. You knew how it was with me. You guessed from the very first. I, I'm running. Now I am too. Faith, if I could take you somewhere, I'd ask. But I, I, I'm just running away. I have no idea what I'm running toward. It's, it, it's only a vague destination, a place I've never been before. But I think it's the only place I can go now. What are you running away from, Davy? Do you really want to know? Yes. I, I don't think you do. You're frightening me. Is it very bad? I'm running away from the war that your brother just died fighting. Is that bad enough? I don't know. I'm so confused. I don't know if it's bad or not. I wish Andrew had run and not died. But he wanted to go. Is it wrong that you don't? I, I don't know. Neither do I. <sighs> North. That's why you're going north. You're leaving the country. You're going to Canada. Yes. Do you still want to come with me? Don't, don't you hate me now? Don't you think that I'm a, a yellow sneaking coward? I don't know if I can go with you. But I know that I don't hate you. I love you, Davy. How can you love me? I do, that's all. And I love you. I want you to know, Faith... That I'm not afraid to fight. I don't think that I'm even afraid to die. What really scares me is that it... It wouldn't mean anything if I did. It wouldn't change anything, my fighting or dying. You think that Andrew died for nothing then? Well, what do you think he died for? Something that he believed in. He died for his country. But what does it mean to die for your country? I want to know. What, what does that mean? It means that... It means that my brother is dead. He was 20 years old. His birthday was the seventh of this month, and you'll never have another. His favorite color was blue, the color of his eyes. And when he got excited, he'd stammer. And then he could whistle like a bird. I've seen wild squirrels and raccoons eat from his hand. And he died for his country. I met a soldier on the road today. He'd lost his arm. You know what he told me? What? That he'd done his duty and that he was a lucky man. As long as we can think that it's our duty to be dismembered and that we're lucky to be allowed to live, I don't see the war ending. Is that the payment for citizenship? Your arm? Your life? Maybe. I can't think about it anymore. It's all spinning around in my head and none of it makes any sense. I ache for wanting Andrew alive and here with me, but he never will be again. <sighs> Davy, I wanted to ask you this last night, but I couldn't. Tonight I can't. What is it? Hold me. Hold me until it's light, Davy. Don't let me go. Here's the fourth act of Davy Skinner's War. It was light, well past dawn. 
But Davy and Faith slept on, exhausted, side by side in the open field. The beauty and innocence of their shared slumber was lost on the man who stood over them with a shotgun. Davy opened his eyes to its long, dark barrel. This is my property. Well, we weren't hurting anything. We were just trying to get some sleep. Don't tell me. I know what you've been doing. Faith, wake up. Don't you be coming at me. Yeah, No, I'm not. Please don't point that gun at me. It's my gun, and I'll point it wherever and at whoever I want to. What is it? What's wrong? Shame on you, girl. Shame. What's happened? You've been caught. That's what. Caught? Caught sleeping. That's not all there was to it. Girl, you look familiar. He don't, but you do. You live around here? No. I think you do. Your folks might like to know what you two have been doing. We haven't been doing anything but sleeping. Whatever else that's been going on has been going on in your evil mind. Hold on there. You better watch yourself, boy. Davy, please. We just fell asleep, sir. That's all. We're awfully sorry if we disturbed you in any way. Are you a local girl? No, I'm not. You sure look familiar We're to just me. traveling through. Just traveling through. I don't know what's got into you youngins these days traveling through. Always on the go. You're moving too fast. You ain't satisfied with nothing. Nothing's good enough for you, is it? Wait, is it a crime to want to change things? And maybe nothing is good enough. If you'd let us, maybe we could make it better. Davy. Well, I know I should shut my mouth. He's not hearing me anyway. I hear you, boy, and you make me sick. Roaming around from place to place, sleeping on other people's property. Not a cent in your pocket, dragging this little girl along with you. And you're going to change the world? Maybe. You better get a haircut and settle down, boy. You're not going to change nothing. Only you'll change. Get smart, maybe, and stop trying to make things any different than what they always been. Now, I want you off my land, and I want you off fast. Next thing I know, you'll be begging for food or stealing it. I don't beg, and I'm not a thief. I say you're a liar and a beggar and a thief. Baby, don't. Better listen to her, boy. I got this gun aimed right at your chest, and I'd dearly love to use it. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Get going. And you, girl... I don't know where your home is, but you better hightail it back there. You're headed for trouble with this one. He's real trouble, I'm warning you. Now get off my land. Huh. Friendly people around here. You knew you were making them mad, but you just kept on. You have to learn how to handle people like that. You don't want to rile them. I do. They need riling. His gun, his land, his world. Did you hear him? Self-righteous and narrow He might have shot you. I guess if I'd let you do it your way, he might have fed his breakfast. He might have. Well, I'd have choked on his breakfast. You were ready to fight him. Are you so surprised? You do think I'm a coward. As much as you may think you hate war, as much as you're mourning your brother and, and you say you wished he'd run rather than fought, there's some part of you, Faith, that thinks I'm a coward for running. There's something inside of you that believes I should go back and fight. You're talking more to yourself than to me, Davy. There's something inside you that believes that. That's the war you're fighting right now, Davy Skinner's war. But how do I win? What should I do? I don't know. But as much as I love you, and I do so much, I can't go to Canada with you. I know. Where will you go now? I can't go back to Pa. I have no place to go. I can't just leave you like this. We're close to a town called Curryville. Do you know anyone there? No, no one. Wait, did you say Curryville? Yes. Curryville. Why do I know that name? Curryville. (sighs) Andrew used to tell me how Mother would take us to visit her father's farm outside Curryville. Grandpa Willie. I I can almost remember. He lived in a funny old tumble-down house, and there were fields of flowers, yellow, blue, and white. Do you think he's still there? I don't know. It may have all been one of Andrew's stories or a dream. Even if it was true, that was nearly 20 years ago. What was your mother's maiden name? Vandermeer. Well, we'll go to Curryville and we'll ask if there's a William Vandermeer who has a farm nearby. You don't have to go with me, Davy. Yes, I do. But what if... We're going. Come on. Now, let's see. The woman said we were to cross the bridge and veer to the right. It's so strange, Davy. I feel as if I remember... But I'm not sure if I only remember what Andrew told me, or if I remember being here. There's something, I I, I don't know, 
something different about this place. It's out of a fairy tale. It's enchanted. Do you feel that? Yes. <laughs> and I thought that the woman looked at us strangely when we asked her about Grandpa Willie. She seemed to know of him. Her directions were clear enough. It was just the way she looked. Davy, this is it. There's the house and the flowers. This is it. Just the way Andrew said. Look, on the porch is Grandpa Willie. I remember him, not what Andrew told me about him, but him. You go with him, Faith. I'll wait here. No, no, I want you with me. A good day to you. Hello. If you have a thirst, the well is right there. The dipper's on the... Rachel? Rachel, is that you? It's Faith, Grandpa Willie. Rachel's little girl. Faith, you are the image of your mother, of Rachel. I thought for a moment that my dear darling had come for me, that my Rachel had come to take me with her. An old man's dreams. Oh, Faith, come closer, child. I I haven't seen you since you were a babe in your mother's arms. Grandpa Willie, I do remember you. Come and sit beside me. Who's the lad? Who is your friend? This is Davy Skinner. Davy, sit down a minute with us. Davy brought me here. If it hadn't been for him, I don't think I would have come. I thank you for bringing faith to me, Davy. Come and sit. I can't. I, I really have to be going. The road is a long and a hot one. Can't I tempt you with the shade of the porch here and some cool well water? Please, Davy, stay for just a little. But not long, Faith. You know I have to go. I know. Where are you so eager to get to, Davy? I have to be on the road, that's all. Not getting anywhere but just going. Yes. Grandpa Willie, why has it been so long since I've seen you? <laughs> it was your father, Faith. We never got on well together. I think that Rachel saw something in him that no one else could. I couldn't see it. And with Rachel gone, he got worse and worse. Oh, I wanted so much to see you and Andrew. But he wouldn't allow it. How is Andrew? He's dead, Grandpa. Oh, no. He was killed in the war. It only happened a few days ago. In a way, that's why I'm here. The war. No matter how far you think you are from it, it reaches out and touches you. It's always there waiting. Everyone has his war. I had mine. One's the same as another. War's war. You may be right, Davy. All war is the same in devastation and horror, that's true, but there's the good fight and the bad, I think. To fight a war is a terrible thing, but sometimes it's more terrible not to fight. What do you mean? When I was a soldier, I was fighting to defend my country from things that I thought were evil. I thought we'd worked so hard to make this country what it was, and it was being threatened. By going and fighting and a lot of others doing the same, I am here now. An old man with his flowers and his animals, living the life I wanted. If I hadn't gone, I, I don't know that I'd have this now. It might be a different world where people like me weren't allowed, or people like you, Davy. You think to have peace, there must be war? Sometimes... There have been wars that I wouldn't have fought, Davy. I was spared because I was too old. But I don't think I would have fought the war that broke out years after my war. That one was a bully's war, one of greed and conquest. In good conscience, I don't think I could have gone to that one. You would have run away then and risked being called a coward and a traitor. Is that what you're doing? Yes. I don't believe in war. Wars don't end war. No, they don't. But they do stop some things. Sometimes you have to fight for the right not to. Are you saying that I shouldn't run away? I'm saying there are times to run and times to stand and fight. And only you, Davy, can decide which you will do. Grandpa, may I stay here with you? Oh, nothing could make me any happier, Faith. I uh, <clears throat> have a little mare about to fall. She's young. This is her first, and I'm a little worried. I, I'm going to go and see to her. He knew we wanted to be alone. He seems to know everything without being told anything. 
Do I have to say goodbye to you now, Davy? I'm not going to Canada. You were right about me fighting with myself. I've been trying to get someone else to make the decision for me, tell me the right thing to do. I still don't believe in war. But I cannot run away from your brother or that one-armed soldier or what Grandpa Willie said. Sometimes I guess you do have to fight for the right not to. I'm going back. I want you to, Davy, and I don't. There's something I want to do before I go. What's that? Will you marry me, Faith? Yes, I'll marry you. And when the war is over, we're going to have the life we want together. Before D.B. Skinner went off to war, he and Faith were married. Faith remained with her grandpa, Willie. The war dragged on and on. But one early spring, hopes were raised that it soon would end. Faith wrote to Davy of these hopes and others. My dearest Davy, everything is much the same here, except that our baby boy grows bigger every day. And Grandpa Willie's flowers have begun to bloom. It's a beautiful spring, made even more beautiful by the prospect of peace. We hear from everyone that the war is nearly over. I cannot quite believe that I may be able soon to count the days until I see you. I have found a name for our son. I call him Andrew. Do you like it? I hope so. Davy, I know that you did the right thing by going. I feel sure that this war will truly be the last. The cost of it has been so enormous, I cannot imagine that it could ever, ever happen again. You have helped to win this war, overcoming great doubts and grave misgivings to earn your peace. I am so proud of you. I long for you, cannot wait for your return. Grandpa sends his love. Andrew is eager to see his father. Come home to us soon. Ever yours, Faith. Three days before the surrender at Appomattox, Corporal Davy Skinner was killed in one of the last battles of the Civil War at Sailor's Creek in Virginia. His son, Andrew Skinner, fought in the Philippines in the Spanish-American War. His son, Lieutenant David William Skinner, was blinded at San Miguel in France in World War I. His son, Sergeant Bill Skinner, was decorated for bravery on Guadalcanal in the Solomons in World War II and served again in Korea. His son, Corporal Davy Skinner, was killed near Saigon, one of the last American casualties of the Vietnam War. Theater is brought to you five nights a week at this time. Tonight's original radio play, Baby Skinner's War, was written by Pamela Russell and produced and directed by Livia Granito. Your host was Leonard Nimoy. Our stars were Tommy Cook and Joan McCall. Featured in the cast were Tyler McVeigh, Robert Towers, Howard Culver, and Parley Bear. John Harlan speaking. Associate Director of Mutual Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Mark Trella is production supervisor. Recording engineer, Hal McDonald. Music editor, Lee Ringette. The Elliott Lewis production of Mutual Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.